Welcome to our Side by Side on this new week, beginning our new series, which is going to be From Darkness into Light. I hope that you find it helpful if you were able to follow through a new song for Thomas. And that is so good to see the honesty of Scripture. And this is no different when we come to this passage in Luke 24. Two, leaving Jerusalem at the end of the day, the first day of that week, and on their way home to Emmaus. So let's read just a few verses together. Now that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that happened. And as they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came up and walked along with them. But they were kept from recognising him. I just want to pause there for a moment. Let's see the things that we can learn already from this. This takes place that very day, on the same day. That's the day when all these other events concerning the sightings of Jesus, the empty tomb, have all taken place. Their conversation reveals what was important to them. They're talking about everything that had happened. And then, of course, in a couple of verses, Jesus will ask them, what are these things? And they'll describe that. But notice how they are kept from recognising him. Jesus comes along and he starts to join them on their journey and they are kept from recognising him. Think about this. I mean, why did Jesus choose these two people? Why did he choose this method? There's no explanation given to that, but he did. He chose two people who were at the lowest point in their lives. And he chose this two because they seemed to be so downcast, but very, in, very intense and very earnest. This is this, the whole narrative of the life of Christ has so consumed them. They are disciples, but they are so downcast. And the withholding this clear vision from them, that is when it says here that they were kept, they were prevented from recognising Jesus has a very, very big place in the whole unfolding of this journey, this journey to light or journey to understanding. And, you know, it's really helpful for us to think about that. In order to get better vision, sometimes we have to have our original vision obscured. You see, if you can see everything clearly, you tend to not want to make much of an effort. But where there is always a little bit of a question in your mind that things are not just clear, it has the potential to move you to, to, to dig deeper, to search more, to seek more, to put in the time, to put in the thought and, and to ask the questions. And as a consequence of that, we will then grow in our faith. Just when things are handed to us on a plate does not make us grow. We may enjoy it, we may appreciate it, but it's not the way I think that we should all the time grow. You could say that they find themselves living in a place of little light. Let's read on because the, the narrative really helps describe this little light that they have. Jesus asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? Verse 17, they stood still, their faces downcast. One of them named Cleophas asked him, are you the only one visiting Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things? he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what is more... It is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning, but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb, and they found it. Yes, just as the woman had said, but they did not see Jesus. This is, this is the place of little light. I think that's maybe how I would describe it. They're in a place like the early dawn, the sort of light that 
Mary might have found that morning as she went early to the tomb of Jesus when it was just becoming light. Things were just a little bit hazy. And I think that's just what they find themselves. The women that go that morning, they find the tomb empty. They, they see angels. There is a vision. They tell them he is not here, he is risen. But then notice those words that they, they use to describe the visit of the other disciples. And they say, they find it just as the woman had said. But they did not see Jesus. It's as if in the grey light of their poor sight, they only had a blurred outline of the events. Cleophas and his partner here, they can understand clearly about the death and the, and, and the, and the, the crucifixion of Jesus. They had a hope. It says he had hoped. We had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. So they have a sort of a vision, but it's very blurred. And they have no idea about resurrection. Yes, they have heard these words about an empty tomb, but there's still no sign of Jesus as far as they're concerned. So the question is, how does the Lord open eyes? It is recorded here that they had not taken in all that God had said. Let's read on. It's so, so, so helpful, this section. He said to them, Jesus, verse 25, how foolish you are and how slow to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Did not the Messiah have to suffer these things and enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. What a strategic two verses, three verses of scripture. These are all the missing pieces in their understanding. Slow to believe. Did you not understand? It talks about how he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures. During the lockdown, Joan and I undertook to, to, to have a go at one of these jigsaws. Jigsaw of the Titanic. And oh so many black and grey small pieces. All these little wires that go from place to place and a huge piece of blue sky with a bit of white. Now, it was only a thousand pieces, but I can tell you the number of times I looked and looked and looked, went away, came back. I think it took about five days for us to do it as we left it on the table, just came back and forwards. And of course, there's a bit of competition between us and a bit of a challenge between us to see if we could do it. But I just could not see it. I would look and look and just could not find the pieces. but. Every single piece fitted in, and when it was finished, we had a clear idea of what it was. Now, there were times I felt like giving up, you know, but Joan, she's the demon, as I say, when it comes to the research, and she does her Sudoku, and she wasn't going to be beat. Well, it was such a satisfaction. But imagine if we had had a slightly wrong picture to work from. We had this picture on the outside of, of the box. Can you imagine if that picture had been slightly something had just not been right. We would never have got it. And you see, unless we have the true picture of Jesus, we will never understand where all the pieces fit in. Where does the death, where does suffering, where does all that fit in to the true picture of Jesus? And where do you get the true picture of Jesus? You get the true picture of Jesus, as he says, in all the scriptures, in all the scriptures concerning himself. Jesus says that the picture found in the Old Testament is a true picture. And so they were able then to understand something of this. That was to fill in, that was to paint in, that was to sharpen the lines that they were to work within. And so it tells us then he takes them to Moses and all the prophets interpreting to them in all the scriptures. And that's what we need to do. We don't go to the, example, to the Old Testament just to get examples of moral stories to motivate us. No, we go to the Old Testament to find Jesus and our eyes will be open wider too if we take the time to do it and walk from the, as we walk from the grey dawn towards the midday clarity, it's going to come about as we do our own research in the scripture. Open my eyes to see the wonderful things in your word. Now we're going to see what happens in this story but we're going to pause just there because I think that's a very significant word. You may be in the place where you feel, I don't have much light. 
but here is an opportunity for you. Light will come as you go to the scripture. Open my eyes, Lord, that I may behold the wonderful things in your word.